Let's begin with the important stuff. The V in Titan V isn't a Roman numeral. There have actually been six Titans now, making this one number seven. Instead, it directly signifies the Volta architecture that this card is based on. And to further drive home the point that it is not a gaming-oriented card, NVIDIA has decided to forego the GeForce GTX in the product name. Not that we won't game on it, of course. After I tell you guys about iFixit. Their ProTech Toolkit gives you the tools you need to tackle any electronics repair challenge. Visit ifixit.com forward slash Linus at the link below to learn more. So to help manage overhead, our test setup is a little different this time around. We're going to be testing our productivity and our gaming loads on our Z270 bench for its fast per-thread performance, while we'll be doing our scientific testing on our X299 bench where those workloads are more likely to benefit from the extra CPU cores. Let's kick things off then with the boring sciencey stuff. I'm just kidding. So, Titan V manages a higher 97th percentile frame rate in Deus Ex Mankind Divided than the second place Titan XP's in DirectX 11 mode, then it continues the curb stompage in DirectX 12. Middle Earth's Shadow of War also sees a huge spike in performance over the Titan XP, and while Assassin's Creed Origins dials things back a little, the Titan V still ends up on top, so I don't even really need to say it, but Given these scores and our synthetic results, Titan V is right now, hands down, the fastest card on the market for gaming. And it isn't even supposed to be. What sets this Titan apart is its FP16 and FP64 performance, along with the inclusion of NVIDIA's new Tensor cores, which are special compute units that are optimized for deep learning and AI. Oh, and while we're at it, NVIDIA is also showing off HBM2 memory for the first time in a Titan. So V does end up with a smaller frame buffer than the Vega workstation cards or the HBM2 equipped Quadro GP100, but it may end up making up for that through sheer brute force. It's whopping 5,120 CUDA cores should make it the fastest card available for compute. Should. But when we first took the shrink wrap off and loaded up some compute benchmarks, we actually found that many CUDA focused tasks simply wouldn't run. Well, it turns out that while previous generation cards were built around CUDA compatibility version 6.1 and earlier, Volta, and by extension the Titan V, bumps this up to 7.0, and new compute kernels need to be compiled to support it. So Blender, most coin mining algorithms, and other tests were affected, with users reporting even more incompatibilities that we didn't see. Ugh. I'm getting flashbacks to the Vega Frontier Edition. Thankfully, the OpenCL layer still works though, so we can get rough numbers for benchmarks that support NVIDIA cards in OpenCL mode, with the caveat that OpenCL does have some overhead compared to CUDA. Starting off with Luxmark, we've got... Wow, are these numbers even right? Luxmark is super parallelized, so those extra CUDA cores pulled double the performance of the Titan XP and far higher than even the Quadro GP100. Chaos Group's Render Suite V-Ray brings us another win for the Titan V, shaving a cool three seconds off the GP100 in second place. Moving on to CompuBench, we see the gap close for the level set segmentation benchmarks, but then the Titan V pulls way out ahead in the Computer Vision Optical Flow benchmark, leaving everything else well in the dust and it continues to assert its dominance in most of SpecView Perf, where 3DS Max, Katia, Maya, Energy, and Showcase all have it at the top. But it should be noted that the Quadros do fire back in some of the other tests thanks to their enhanced driver code paths. As for coin mining, well, the rumors are true. It is a beast, especially an ETH hash. But with that said, 
the $3,000 price tag is gonna kill your ROI time. And it doesn't even win in every scenario. Vega Frontier handily outperforms it in Kryptonite. Whew, that's a lot of testing. And it looks like Volta is mostly living up to its promises so far. But we've got one more test up our sleeves for its compute performance, deep learning. Using ImageNet 12 on CAF2, Titan V managed a significant lead at both tested batch size thanks to its tensor cores. But maybe even more interestingly, it even wins without them enabled against the GP100, a truly monstrous feat because for context, you guys, that card is still almost triple the price. Well, okay then, line is fine. Volta's great for compute. Big whoop, what does that mean for me? Okay, I'll get to that. First, we need to talk about thermals and power because this bit is really important. While Titan V manages to throttle a bit harder than the GP100 and the GTX 1080 Ti in our testing, and while it has the second highest idle power draw in our entire test lineup, thanks at least partially to Nvidia using TSMC's 12 nanometer manufacturing process, it's also got the lowest full load power draw, which is bonkers considering everything we know about its overall performance. So then, back to your question. What this means for you is that the slightly cut down and maybe higher clocked enthusiast consumer variants without any tensor cores are gonna be mind bogglingly fast. But that's a conversation for another day. Here and now, what we have is a quadro killer at a third of the price for most workloads and one that can game faster than anything that's ever come before it. Though I'm not saying you should go out and buy one. If raw horsepower for compute is your jam, and you won't benefit from a bigger frame buffer or multi-GPU with NVLink, these connectors, they're dead. You're looking at your next card right here. Though, you'll need to roll your own CUDA kernels or wait until compatibility level seven is mainstream, by which time there will probably be a quadro variant. As for the gamers, well, the lack of G-Force in the branding says it all. It is just not worth it. Even for you, Mr. or Ms. Megaballer over there. I mean, do you really want something that's not even SLI compatible anyway? So you'd have to run a single card in your system like some kind of a peasant? So think of the V not as something to buy, but as more of a teaser for what may come in 2018. I know that I'm feeling sufficiently teased right about now. Speaking of teasing, FreshBooks. They don't tease, they give you the whole thing. It's the small business accounting software that's custom built for how you want to work. If you're a freelancer or a small business owner, FreshBooks is a simple way to be more productive, more organized, and get paid faster. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games, and they've got fully featured apps for iOS and Android, so you you can take all of your timesheet tracking and expense tracking with you on the go. For an unrestricted 30-day free trial, just go to freshbooks.com slash tech tips. We'll have that linked below and enter Linus Tech Tips in the how you heard about us section. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it's awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or maybe check out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. We should just sell ours. Like, what are we gonna do with this? beyond making this video. Anyway, also linked in the video description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.